I was just in Japan actually, and 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 what's going down there? You want to talk about Mad Max? Is like that's fucking crazy shit. And and we're actually going to go back and shit. We were doing the preliminary thing there, and like the the actual reactors, um, the the steel, the containment of the reactors is now melting in, in, into the sort of groundwater and melting into the the soil. And there's like major cities there of like 500,000 people that are completely fucking irradiated. And they're not telling people the truth and the kids know that it's wrong. They're really frustrated and they're really angry. And, and the government's just like denying shit. And, and both Chernobyl and, and, and in Japan, I was shocked because everyone, because, you know, energy, people are going, oh, nu you know, nuclear power, nuclear power, it's, you know, it's the future, it's great, and whatever. And you, you just go there and you go, if it fucks up even this much, if it fucks up just a tiny bit, like, you know, in, in the Ukraine, an area the size of France is still completely irradiated, you know, and you're just like, well, <laughs> I mean, what the, like, how is this even a fucking option? Yeah, how is it a possibility that you could have one mistake or a natural disaster like mm -hmm. a tsunami? Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that they only fucked. they only planned for what was an 8.2 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's as bad as it could get, and mm -hmm. they got a 9, mm -hmm. and they just wrecked everything. And then yeah. the power goes out, and they can't cool everything off, and then they're pouring ocean water on yeah, it. And yeah. that water is now back in the ocean. They, yeah. they, there's a, an online um, uh, presentation that shows the irradiated water and how it's moving through yeah, the yeah. Pacific Ocean. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking terrifying. Yeah. It's 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 uh it's beyond terrifying, and what's happening in Japan now is, uh, I mean, it just shows you like, well, what are they gonna, what, what can they do? They're, how are they going to evacuate a million people? Where the fuck are they going to evacuate them to? And and how big is Japan? Like, what is the total size of it? Is it possible that the entire Japanese island will get irradiated? Well, no, because it's I, oh, I now I'm going to show myself up here for being a bad boy, but I think it's like seven major islands. Um. So you know, there's you know Sapporo's on the north one, and so they have different islands. But it, it, it is definitely it's it's sort of this area that's about an hour and a half, two hours north of Tokyo. But it's actually sort of heavily populated around there. Two hours drive. Yeah. It's just so much cheaper for a nuclear power plant to violate the rules and either pay no fine or pay a trivial fine than it is to comply. What we've learned from Fukushima is we, uh, we are not immune. People argue that Three Mile Island was just a fluke, and we caught it half hour before full melt. Chernobyl wasn't relevant because it was a Soviet-designed reactor. But these were GE-designed reactors in Japan, in a technologically advanced society with a regulatory structure very similar to ours, with the same problem of cozy relations with the industries to regulate. And what can happen in Japan can happen here. It won't happen the same way. And no one can tell you which reactor it will happen to. It's a pure function of Russian roulette. I mean, I can put one bullet into a, uh, one chamber of a gun, spin it, and pull the trigger. I have a pretty good chance that that first time I'm not going to blow my head up. But I also could. Spinning a second time is not very wise, and the third is really foolish. And in essence, that is what dealing with nuclear power is. Now, there are a whole series of other problems. Each of the two units of San Onofre produces every year enough plutonium for 100 nuclear weapons. So 200 nuclear bombs worth of plutonium produced each year from those two reactors. Plutonium has a half-life of 24,000 years. It's not going away quickly. It's also incredibly toxic material, one millionth of an ounce will cause lung cancer if inhaled with a statistical 100% cert near certainty, near 100%. Uh, incredibly toxic. So think about it. You can make bombs out of it. It's exquisitely toxic. Probably the most toxic material on Earth. There might be a couple of viruses that on a per, uh, gram basis are more, more toxic, but essentially the most toxic material on Earth. And it lasts for half a million years, 20 half-lives. And so we, the waste we produce has to be kept from the human environment for 500,000 years. We've been a species for about 100,000 years. We have had recorded history for about 10,000 years. We've had a country for two or 300 years. How can you maintain waste that long? I've often said that these reactors produce 50 years of electricity and half a million years of waste. It's not a particularly good deal for the people who are going to have to deal with it. We're getting the power. 
they're getting the cancers, generation after generation. And we simply don't have a way of disposing of it safely. We don't know how to keep it in one place in the environment without it migrating into groundwater and polluting water supplies.